Hi, in this video we'll learn how to subtract mixed fractions with like denominators. So let's take a look at the first example. There are two ways to solve it. Um, the first one is the stacked form and the second one is the, the, the simple way. So here let's, um, let's solve it by the simple way first. So what we're going to do is we'll take the mixed fraction is made up of um, a whole number and also the fraction. So mixed fraction, why is it called mixed fraction? Because it has a whole number and it also has a fraction. That's why it's called mixed fraction. So what we will do is, first of all, we'll subtract the whole parts and then we're gonna subtract the fractional part. So let's, um, let's separate the whole parts and the fractional parts. So for the whole parts, I have five here and this is four. So I'll subtract, uh, I'll write this as five minus four. So five minus four will be equal to one. So I'm done subtracting the whole part. Now I will subtract the fractional part here. So fractional part is 3 7th minus 1 7th. Well, we, we know that when we subtract the fractions with like denominators, we never add or subtract the denominator. So denominator will uh, remain same, which is 7. And then we can just go ahead and subtract the numerators. 3 minus 1 will give me 2. Now what I can do is I can combine these two I can combine the uh, whole number and the fractional part and get the whole, uh, get the mixed fraction here. So I have the whole number, which is one. And for the fractional part, I have two seven. So I will write this as one, two, seven. Now, the other way of doing it is you can write this in the stack form. So suppose if I have this five, three, fourth. Now you have to make sure the number which is written, the mixed fraction, which is written first, that should go on the top. And the number which is after the minus sign goes in the bottom. Then I will write here minus 4, 1, 7. Now what we're going to do is we'll subtract the whole parts again first. Subtracting the whole parts, 5 minus 4 will give me 1. And then 3 fourth, sorry, this is 3 7. This is 3 7. So 3 7 minus 1 7 is going to be 2 7. So my answer is 1, 2 7. So in both the cases, you will get the same answer. Now let's take a look at another example here. I have 8, 3 fourth minus 6, 1 fourth. Here again, what we will do is we'll subtract the whole parts first. Whole part, we'll subtract the whole number first. 8 minus 6 is going to be 2. And then we'll subtract the fractional part. So the fractional part is 3 fourth. And for this fraction, the fractional part is 1 fourth. So I'll subtract 1 fourth here and then we know that the uh, denominator will still remain 4 and for the numerators we are subtracting 3 minus 1 will give me 2. This is 2 fourth. I can reduce this into simplest form by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 2 fourth is equal to 1 half. Because you divide the numerator and denominator by 2 and 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1 and 4 divided by 2 will be 2. So 2 fourth is reduced to 1 half and my final answer is Two, one half. Now you can also use the stacked method here. Just um, make sure that you write the first first fraction on the top. Eight, three fourth will go on the top, and then six, one fourth will go in the bottom. You can subtract eight minus six will give you two. Even though if you write this in stacked form, you will get the same answer. Eight minus six is going to be two, and three fourth minus one fourth is going to be two fourth. And you can reduce two fourth to one half, so your answer is going to be two, one half. So you'll still get the same answer in both the cases. Now, let's take a look at another example here. Suppose if I have this. Uh, suppose if I have, this is the third example I have. This was my first example. This is my second example. And the third example is, suppose if I have this, 7, 2, 5th minus 4, 3, 5th. Now, here, this is a different case. This is a different case because when you subtract the whole numbers, you can easily subtract. 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. How about the fractional part? For the fractional part, you have 2 fifth first and then 3 fifth. So 2 fifth minus 3 fifth. Can you subtract 2 from 3? Well, you can do that, but we are not. We are doing fractions here. We're not dealing with the negative numbers. So what we have to do is we can subtract uh, 3 fifth from 2 fifth. Here you can see the numerator is 2 and the numerator is 3 here. So this numerator is greater than this numerator. So we can't use the stacked 
form where we can't use this method to solve this example. We're going to use a different method in which we'll change this mixed fraction. And you'll see how I do that. So I can write, so we'll, we'll be only working on this, this part, 7 2 fifth. I will change this and this will remain as it is. 4 3 fifth will remain as it is. Now I can write 7 2 fifth as 7 plus 2 fifth because I know that mixed fraction is made up of a whole number and the fractional part. So I'm just separating the whole part and the fractional part. Now I can write 7 as 6 plus 1. I can do that. I can write 7 as 6 plus 1 and then I have 2 fifth as the fractional part. So this will be 2 fifth. Now, did I change anything? No, I didn't change anything at all because I can always write 7 as 6 plus 1. So now what I'm going to do is I have to change 1 into a fraction. How do I change 1 into a fraction? So what I'm going to do is I'll write 6 first and then I want to change 1 as a fraction and then I have 2 fifth here. So what I'll do is I'll see the number next to this. I have 1 here and I'll see the, see the fraction next to it. The fraction next to it is 2 fifth, and I'll look at the denominator, I'll circle the denominator. Now, I know for sure that I need 5 in the denominator. I know for sure that I need 5 in the denominator. Now, what will make this fraction equal to 1? Because you have 6 in place of 6, you have 2 fifth in place of 2 fifth, but you need something for 1. Now, how do I change this? How do I write 1 as a fraction? So I know for sure that my denominator should be 5 because this denominator is 5. I will look at the fraction next to 1 and the denominator is 5. So I need 5 in the denominator for sure. Now what do I write on top to make this equal to 1? I can write 5 here on top to make it equal to 1. Now 5 over 5, 5 fifth is equal to 1. So I didn't change anything at all. This is just a different way of writing 1 in the form of fraction. Okay, now I have got the whole part and again the fractional part. So what I'm going to do is I'll add the fractional part. So here I have 6, then plus for adding the fractional part, I can just go ahead and add the numerators. 5 plus 2 is going to be 7 and the denominator will still remain 5 here. So this will be 6 plus 7 fifth and I can combine it because I know that this is a mixed fraction. Whole number plus the fraction fractional part will make it... Uh, mixed fraction. So this is 6, 7, fifth. Now what I did, I took this fraction and I break it. Again, I break it and then I've got this mixed number. So instead of writing 7, 2, fifth in place of 7, 2, fifth, I can write 6, 7, fifth because 7, 2, fifth is equal to 6, 7, fifth. Now this fraction looks bad. We know that this is an improper fraction since the numerator is greater than the denominator. But this is not the final answer. We'll be we still have to work on it. So we don't have to worry about the improper fraction here. We are not going ahead and dividing it and changing it to the proper fraction. So again, what we, we gonna do we, uh, is <clears throat> instead of writing 7 2 fifth, I can write 6 7 fifth because these two are the equivalent, um, these, these are the equivalent mixed numbers. So here, going back to a question again, I have 7 2 fifth in place of 7 2 fifth, I'll write 6 7 fifth. I can write 6 7 fifth, minus 4 3 fifth why did i why i why did i do all this the reason is because i want to change the fractional part i need the, the i need the numerator which should be greater than this numerator because we have 3 fifth here and here we have 7 fifth before it was 2 fifth and 3 fifth and i can subtract 3 fifth from 2 fifth but now you can see that i can subtract 3 fifth from 7 fifth so that well, I'm going to do, do that. So first of all, we'll subtract the fractional part. Again, this is like a simple example here, but just don't look at this improper fraction. This is a simple example here. So I have six minus four, I'll subtract the whole part first. Six minus four is gonna be two, and then seven fifth minus three fifth is gonna be four fifth. So my final answer is two four fifth. And this answer looks good. Now, if you find this method difficult, I have another video for the same topic in which I have shown a different method. I would strongly recommend you to watch that video. The link is in the description and also at the top left corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.